Praise God. Amen. I am excited about another session that we're going to have in the Word of God today. It's always refreshing in my spirit to be able to come and share the Word of God with you each day. Good morning, Ecclesia. Good morning, believers. Good morning, those of you who know who you are, the ruling council of the living God. Remember that Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my Ecclesia, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Praise the name of the Lord. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what things you bind on earth are those things that are already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth are those things that are already loosed in heaven. And then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, that it always goes out and never returns into your void. Each and every day, God, when we have the opportunity to get into your word, Father, we do so with excitement. We do so with, with knowing that, God, that you are unveiling fresh uh, revelation to us, Father, fresh insights, fresh uh, understanding in your word today, Father. So we just bless you for that today, and we thank you for it today. Now, Father, I pray for each person who is on this broadcast in this session today. Father, I pray that your word will uh, permeate their spirit, that it will become an engrafted word. Father, they will, they will begin to live thereby in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare each one of them as good ground in the name of Jesus and that they will bring forth good fruit in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're still dealing with principles of gathering. Uh, our overall theme is how Jesus is building his ecclesia. And our uh, underlying uh, subtopic, if you will, is the principles of gathering. Praise God. Amen. And we're in the 11th part. And the fact that we're in the 11th part of this should tell you that uh, this part of gathering is really close to me and it means a lot to me. I really believe the gathering, the way we gather is critical, amen, in the kingdom of God, amen. Uh, we've given you our primary scripture that we use every day, and we use the same one each day, basically because everything that we're teaching is built around this central passage in Matthew where uh, Jesus said he would build his ecclesia and the gates of Hades would not prevail against it. Amen. Uh, we understand, now let's get our little foundation now, that Jesus is building his ecclesia with pe men and women who have a revelation that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Son of God, who are led by the Holy Spirit, who embrace the values of the kingdom of God, and who do so uh, and function in a, a structure that is conducive to both spiritual and numerical growth. Uh, we understand that Ecclesia is, first of all, organic. It is made up with people, believers like you and I. This is how the, or, uh, the Ecclesia is first formed. It has a government, and we will spend some time on the government of the Ecclesia because I believe it's critical. I believe there's some, some misunderstandings uh, of what the government of the body of Christ is all about. And that it manifests. It is physical. You can actually see the Ecclesia. You know it exists. And this will help you even today as we study some more foundational things about gathering from house to house. The Ecclesia is a, is a system that Jesus instituted when he uh, actually spoke of something that the people understood in that day to be a ruling council. So what I have uh, summarized it to saying is that the Ecclesia is a fully operational system that exists when all components are present and working. In other words, that's how you determine a structure. It was, it's when all the pieces are functioning and they are working. God's purpose is to establish his kingdom, his rule, his reign and authority in the earth. Praise God. The ecclesia is the only representative of the kingdom of God in the earth. I want you to get that. This is the only representative of the kingdom of God in the earth. Uh, when we look at doctrine, uh, praise God, uh, apostolic doctrine clarifies kingdom values. When we see that, it brings us all together. When we start looking at the way the church is set up, it's by, based on denominational doctrine, and that establishes lines of demarcation between segments of the body of Christ. I often say, when you tell me your denomination, you then let me know the perimeters of your belief system. So I want you to understand that the doctrine in the first century was designed to bring us all together. 
Whenever you change the components, you change the operation. And when you change the operation, you change the outcome. So all of this needs to be kept in your heart. And I am praying more and more that you understand the impact that the translation or the mistranslation of Ecclesia to church has had uh, on the body of Christ. Again, this cannot be overemphasized. I cannot say it enough. Uh, if you believe something, if you believe you're something that you're not, you will act according to what you believe you are. Uh, if you believe you're a lay person, you will always uh, look to a spiritual specialist, I mean, for your well-being, and you'll always look to somebody else. Uh, if you believe you are a kingdom priest, you will look to the Lord. Amen. Uh, yet you understand your relationship in the ecclesia is with elders and ministry gifts uh, and all of those type things. And so you need to understand really who you are. Uh, this, this understanding of what Jesus really said at Caesarea Philippi is so important because nothing else we discuss will make sense if you don't keep reminding yourself that ecclesia and church are completely different. Uh, anything we teach will just, just, just really won't make a lot of sense unless you keep that in your mind. The mindset, uh, of the, of your identity based on this, uh, mistranslation is critical. Uh, it strikes at the core of your ability to function in the earth as Jesus intended. Uh, it, it explains why what Jesus said and what we have become is so different. I'm constantly praying out of Ephesians 1 and 18, uh, the, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened because church as we know it is powerful, is visible, is tangible, it's a reality, come on, uh, and it, uh, it is based on a religious system that was never intended by Jesus Christ, but yet uh, yesterday was a Sunday and everybody, quote, got up and went to church. Uh, come on, you understand? In other words, that is a reality that we're still dealing with. It is difficult to measure ecclesia on its own merit because church is the foundation from which we see, read about, experience, and speak. Uh, the Lord is showing me the importance, so much the importance of going beyond proclaiming ecclesia, but also demonstrating it in this region. Uh, God has surrounded me, praise God, uh, with strong people. I am so thankful for the people God has brought around me who are committed to pioneering this work. I am really thankful for them. Uh, but they're not the only ones, and we're not the only ones. I'm in regular contact with leaders around, in other states who are pursuing and demonstrating ecclesia in their regions. regions. Uh, I have received inquiries from individuals uh, who want to start gatherings in their homes, and, and that's either locally and abroad. I mean, I've, I received an uh, email last night from a person in another country wanting to know what can they do to start a gathering in their area. Gathering from house to house, helps to foster a complete recalibration of our mindset and purpose. It is more than a change of venue. It is a change that begins within you. I like that little phrase there. I, it came up the other week and I just stuck with it. Uh, gathering from house to house is more than a change of venue. It begins a change within you. And I'm going to even quote a friend of mine. He says, this is the new paradigm. This is the way... We are, are, are moving now. This is what God is doing. This is what he's releasing into the earth right now. Uh, you're either molded to be a spectator or you're at least put into an atmosphere where you can actively participate. And that's what is so important to us today. Now, I want to remind you for before we go to the next part that Ecclesia is a ruling council. I want to re remind you that because we've, we haven't discussed that in a while and it's important as we continue today and, and really make some uh, headway into what we're uh, uh, speaking about. We want to deal with this whole idea that Ecclesia is a ruling council. The keys to the kingdom combined with your authority to bind and loose reveals Jesus' intent for you, amen, to be among a body of believers with authority. When he said you can bind and loose, you're not binding and loosing just anything you want to bind and loose. You're binding and loosing on earth those things which have already been bound and loosed in heaven. In other words, you are seeing what heaven desires and you're beginning to bring that into the earth. It is the, the fulfillment <coughs> of what Jesus said when he taught them to pray. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And again, we have this very 
a docile type way of saying that. You know, when we say the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. No, we need to understand as ecclesia, we're not just playing little, you know, little beggars. We're actually saying what Jesus told us to command. He said, Our Father, let's declare who he is. He's our Father. He is in heaven. Hallowed. And hollow is his name. His name is powerful. His name is above all names. And then he gave us the first command. Come kingdom. It didn't say just thy kingdom come. But he said come kingdom. Come thy will on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, I've seen what heaven desires on the earth. And I'm saying come into the earth. Manifest in the earth. Be in the earth as the Lord intends it to be in the earth. Come thy kingdom. Come thy will into the earth realm in the name of Jesus. And so I want you to understand that you are a ruling council. You are called to legislate, to set policies, to confer or deny citizenship and to elect officials. That's who you are. That is who the ecclesia was when Jesus said it back in the first century. And that's who it is today. Keep this in mind because I'm going to get into something in a few moments that I believe you'll uh, help you understand it and understand who you are even more. When you gather, not only you gather to legislate, set policies, confer or deny citizenship or elect officials, but you also gather to exhort, edify, and comfort one another. You're there to build. That's a prophetic um, uh, picture there. Uh, the Bible says uh, prophecy is, is edification, exhortation, and comfort. So when you come together, you're there to build each other prophetically. You're there to strengthen each other prophetically. And when you gather uh, you're to prayerfully seek divine strategies to dismantle demonic strongholds in your families, in your cities, in your region, and beyond. So you're looking to the Holy Spirit, you know, just meeting to come together in the living room and sing a few songs and walk away and let that be it, then you're not fulfilling the totality of what you're called to be. In other words, you should seek God. What is our mission? What are we all about? You know, there's an individually God will speak to you and corporately you come together, support each other. And you then you go before the throne of God and you begin to bring those things into the earth realm that he intended to be here uh, all along. So you are to prayerfully seek divine strategies, prayerfully seek ways to dismantle the dem demonic strongholds uh, around your area. Gathering from house to house is extremely valid for today. Amen. It's simple. It's strategic, and it is scriptural. Uh, and there's ample evidence that gathering from house to house was the norm in the first century. Now, this is where I'm about to get into right now. It is historical and biblically sound. The ecclesia is measured by kingdom expansion, uh, impacting regions, and false systems being torn down. But there's some beliefs today that are saying that gathering from house to house was only for the first century. And so I want to deal with some of those because if you say it's only for the first century, then you, you, you're you reading a part of Scripture. And I want to, uh, again, give another side. These are study starters. I want you to look at both sides of this. Some say it's all persecution. Some say it wasn't. And this is one of the areas why they say they uh, met in house to house because of persecution. And first of all, let me start by saying this. Yes, there was some persecution. Just like there is today, there's persecution. All you have to do is realize that there is persecution actually against the body of Christ today. And prior to 250 AD, you find that it was sporadic and localized. It was more mob hostility than it was governmental sanction. And so you have to look at scripture and can't you can't overlook the little words. If there's persecution, certain little things that you see in passage, in passage of scripture would not exist. Let's look at Acts 2 and 47. You remember, that's where it said the Lord added to the ecclesia daily such as were being saved. Well, that passage uh, was preceded by another statement. It says they were praising God and having favor with all the people. In other words, before the Lord added to the ecclesia, there was public favor. So obviously, that, that is not persecution. It says they, 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 they had favor among all the people. Well, let's go, I talked to you about uh, in Acts chapter 8, and we see where Saul uh, wreaked havoc on the ecclesia, and he was going and persecuting the believers. Well, I want you to notice something. He knew where to go. He knew how to go from house to house. He wasn't looking just, uh, where can I find these folks? 
He knew where they were. He knew they were in houses. The Bible says he went into houses. And then I want you to get this other part. He got his authority from the religious leaders and not the government. Please capture that in your spirit. He got his authority from the chief priests and he did not get it from the governmental authorities. This is very important. Why? Because really, when you look at throughout Acts, there are many instances where the government intervened to protect the ecclesia, to protect the, the believers. The government intervened in their behalf. Uh, in Acts chapter 18, uh, 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 Galileo, I believe it's pronounced, who was the deputy of Achaia, uh, uh, he didn't even want to be bothered with the religious leaders who brought an accusation against Paul. He said, look, this is your, of your own little stuff right here. We're not going to get involved in this. This is what he said. In Acts 19, the town clerk squashed the intents of a mob against Paul. Uh, and, and, with the low, and when, he, when, he, when his uh, casting out the devil of that, and that young girl uh, really messed with their livelihood, and the, the town clerk said, no, 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 we're not going to deal with this. You're going to squash this. You're going to bring it down. Uh, in Acts chapter 23, uh, there was uh, Claudius Lysias, I believe it's pronounced, who rescued Paul and wrote a letter of intervention in his behalf. In fact, there was a lot of political and legal wrangling that actually protected Paul during that time. Uh, there's the New Testament passages that deal with the gathering of the whole congregation, and we were going to get into that a little later. I don't know if we'll make it today, but we're going to get into the whole idea of gathering in the whole congregation. These were open to the public and subject to having unbelievers, spies, and dissidents among them. So, I mean, when they were there in public, anybody could have shown up at those gatherings. So, obviously, uh, there wasn't such persecution that they could not meet publicly. The point is that persecution was not the reason they met from house to house. It was choice. Get that in your heart. Another area, they say it was because of poverty. In other words, they couldn't afford it to build up buildings, so that's why they didn't do it. Well, think about Ananias and Sapphira for a moment. Just go back to that whole story about Ananias and Sapphira. Their death was a result of them lying to the Holy Ghost. We know that. That's a fact. Let's stop there. Okay, so we know why they died. But what did they lie about? They lied about how much they gained from selling property. And remember, the whole thing began when people were selling houses and lands and raised enough so that no one lacked among them. Do you get that? In other words, when they raised enough money, it was laid at the apostles' feet and no one lacked among them. And you know what? That's a beautiful picture of what they were doing with excess lands and houses. No one lacked among them. You know what we'd be doing today? We would build the building and fill it with people who were lacking. That's how we would take it today. But no, in that day, they took the money and they made sure that no one lacked among them. Come on, let's go out through the New Testament. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, uh, Paul told Timothy to charge those uh, uh, who are rich in this world system that they be not high-minded and trust in uncertain riches, uh, uh, but trust in the living God who giveth richly all things to enjoy. And you understand what I'm saying? That they do good, uh, that they that rich are uh, be ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Uh, and this was not to sinners. He was telling, he was telling to tell this to wealthy believers. Get this. James picked it up. In the, uh, in James it says, my brother, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus, uh, I have not the faith of, uh, do you have the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect to persons? He said, for if there come one into your assembly, and by the way, it's a unique thing that he used there, that word assembly is from the word synagogue. In other words, your building. He says, if anyone comes into your building, a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that wear the, the, the gay clothing and say unto him, sit down in a good place and say to the poor, stand there and, and uh, or sit here under my footstool, are you not partial in yourselves and become judges of evil and, and have evil thoughts? This was dealing with wealthy people who were given preferential treatment among the body of believers. So it was talking about folks who had money, folks. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul was dealing with the way they came to the Lord's table. And we look at that whole thing, you know, for I received the Lord, that which I also received, you know, that on the same night the Lord took bread and break it. We read that whole story, but look at it contextually, what he was dealing with. 
He was dealing with the way they approached the Lord's tables and it centered around the way the rich and poor believers came. The wealthy would come in there and they would eat up everything. And guess what? Uh, the poor would come in and would have nothing because it was a festive time. It was a time where they came together for meal. Come on. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It was wealthy people. Uh, here's the point. There was ample wealth available so that buildings and meeting places could have been po made possible. But again, they met from house to house for choice, not because they couldn't have raised the money to do so. Amen. So you, there wasn't enough persecution and they could have raised the money. The third area is uh, they say, well, coming out of the houses, progressively maturing uh, the, the, the church is what they've said. Uh, well, let me let me deal with that for a second. This suggests that gathering from house to house was only intended for the first century. If that is the case, then there's some missing pieces in Scripture. And so we need to deal with that. There's no specific instructions regarding how they met. Uh, yet most writings seem to imply that they gathered from house to house. Uh, there are statements that imply that meeting from house to house uh, was, was not only the way they did, but was the norm of that day. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it is nothing. There are no statements that imply that it was only to be temporary. In fact, it seems to be the opposite that was demonstrated. Meeting in the temple became absent after they were scattered throughout the region. Oh, you never see that after they were scattered. The advent of dedicated buildings was not divinely inspired. When they started talking about buildings, it wasn't a divine inspiration from the Bible. Uh, it doesn't show anywhere in history where even godly men even did this. It was government who decided they needed a place to get people together and control them. Uh, the first buildings were pagan edifices. The mistranslation of the word ecclesia to church reinforced the building concept which is used to control rather than to empower. See, I can go on, on and on and on that we have all of these reasons why they uh, uh, shouldn't have, shouldn't be gathering from house to house today, but everything in Scripture points the other way around. Everything in history points the other way around. I believe that's important. Well, we've still got to deal with another part of this. Did they gather corporately? Did they gather as a whole uh, body of believers? They absolutely did. In our next session, we're going to begin to pick up on how they gathered as a whole ecclesia. And that's so important. Praise God. Amen. Go back and study these things. Praise God. That's the big thing I want you to do. Not just take it and say, uh, this is uh, what it, it is. I want you to go back and study it for yourself. And you'll find out in history. And you'll find out in scripture that it wasn't because of persecution. It wasn't because they were in poverty. And there's nothing in scripture that shows that uh, it should have ended. They did it because they chose to gather from house to house. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. I pray that this is being a blessing to you. I pray that God is stirring something in your heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that it does go out and never return into your void. Minister to your people today as never before. Let us stay in their spirits all day today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you for liking our Facebook page. I'm constantly seeing new people liking it and you're sharing it with your friends and they're coming in and liking it. Thank you for those of you who are visiting our, our uh, website. Amen. Uh, that's how I know I get these emails because people are going through our contact page and contacting me. Amen. So I thank you for contacting and, and looking at our website. Thank you for looking at our YouTube channel and subscribing to it. I thank, I'm thankful because there are those who are deaf who are now able to go to our YouTube channel and use the closed captioning and follow us in these teachings. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm excited for what God is about to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today and let's close as we always do and that is that God is still on the throne, the devil is defeated, and Jesus is Lord. You be blessed.